everybody. Last year I put out a video on Forrest Fenn and Eric Sloan's friendship. We recently were in Santa Fe the same time that Malika and Mauro Nardelli were there and we got to talking about Eric Sloan again. Quick question, it might be a dumb question. Was $17 a square inch uh, serious? If I gave you a painting, what kind of price would you put on it? You don't have enough information. Right, right. And so I started I told this to Eric. I said, he jumped on me for selling his paintings for $17 a square inch. I said, Eric, everything is sold by South. Yachts, diamonds, and real estate. He said, well, I don't like... <laughs> There's some things you don't talk to an artist about. One of them is man hours. They don't know. But, and I learned an awful lot about from Eric, from his perspective. I mean, I was a businessman, and he was an artist. And... There, there are places where those lines don't cross when you yeah. talk. Eric, Eric was, a, was a great humanarian, if that's a word. Yeah. And we started talking to each other, and I said in my book, you know, the waitress is heading for the exit the back. Yeah. She <laughs> tripped over a bucket trying to get out the back door <laughs> or something. But, uh, and in the back of my book, I, I made the comment that Eric, Eric Spain's an hour selling for $85 a square inch. And Eric must be smiling down at me for that. Right. But he, he, he told me one time that if you put all my paintings side by side, they would reach a mile. And I said, Eric, you jumped all over me for saying I sell them for seventeen dollars, and now you're telling me that they'll reach a mile. And we laughed about that. Yeah. I, you know, the idiosyncrasy of, of that conversation come full circle. Yeah. Malika, you say you have how many paintings now? What? I was asking how many she had. That close to, tw I believe, 20, 20. She's the expert paint. on Eric Sloan now. Are you? Do you have any favorites of type that he did? So many my different first styles. One, my first one. Your was, first one? It, it's a spring bridge, and it was the first painting that I saw because I learned about Eric de Forest. Mm -hmm. And then it was the first painting I saw, and I bought it. Yeah. And, and I thought... Was that here? No. Oh, okay. And I thought it was going to be the only painting I bought. Mm -hmm. And now they just keep coming. You know? <laughs> well, Jennifer was, was looking for my treasure. Tre and that, she didn't know who Eric Sloan was no. until she met me. Mm -hmm. Same here. Mm -hmm. and, and it was... And, and just reading from one book to the next. Mm -hmm. and, and learning more about him. And I... You just fall in love with him. Right, you right. Know, the same as we all have done for Forrest. Right, right. Yeah. He's yeah, uh, so amazing. Amazing. Exactly. The I, life we, we can't even compare it. Right. To the life we live today to the life he lived. Yes. Right. He, he said that he, for the, to the fullest. when he was driving, he was driving across country or something and he would see something and he would remember it. He'd even start sketching it before he, you know, made it to his destination. He already had in his mind, you know, what he was going to do next. Eric told me one time that he never painted outside because the sun distorts your subject. He always painted in the studio. Most artists like to paint outside. Mm -hmm. And Eric, he said one time that he said, I, w I would use banana uh, to, as pigment on my painting if it would give me the result that I want. He says you should not restrict an artist. That's what he felt. And I, you have to agree with him. It looks like he also did sketching on the, some of his paintings. Do you know what I mean? He did. He actually didn't. The only thing he ever sketched was the sickle. Okay. Because the symmetry of the curve in the sickle, he wanted it exact because he was so fascinated by early pioneer farm tools. Mm -hmm. And everything else, when you see the lines, that was just something that added... With that they needed that little something to give the definition mm -hmm. to the painting. Yeah, so that that was just uh, um, he didn't he didn't like sketching out his paintings. He just kind of that's why I called them happy accidents. I don't mm -hmm. think he had sketchbooks. Did he? No, I never saw a sketchbook. No. He, he did. He was very pen and ink, though. I right? remember this times when I think I told this story in my book that uh, a client would come in my gallery and come into my office and I'd start talking to him. Eric is sitting there waiting to go to lunch or something. And I'd introduce 
this man to Mrs. Eric Sloan. He's, he's a painter and he, he writes books and things. And oh, well, for, Eric would say, Forrest, well, don't you have one of my books around here someplace? The fact is, I had about a hundred under my desk. And I'd pull one out and give it to Eric, and, and Eric would get a, a pen and he'd say, well, what do you do for a living, sir? Well, he says, I'm an old man from Oklahoma City. And so Eric would never stop his conversation. But he's, he's, he's you know, two minutes later, he's got a beautiful little etching of, of, a, of an oil well spurting oil out in the 1929 <laughs> Ford sitting there. I mean, wonderful sketches. And he could carry on a full conversation and the doodle at the same time. And the clients were all, I mean, I feel we, like we, we kind of lured the clients in. And they, nearly always they'd buy a painting because of not because they, they liked the painting so much, but they fell in love with Eric Sloan. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I, I learned from your books and you uh, about him, and I, I enjoyed reading and learning about him tremendously. There's, he had a lot of knowledge about yeah. a lot of things, but yeah. there's so many aspects about him. He was a very patriotic Oh yeah, all American man. Right. The, and he yeah. loved the, the pioneers. Yeah. Yeah, and the the story about the bells and how he uh, wanted to make that a. See that a, bell over there? Eric found that up near Taos, it rolling out of a, a bank in, oh. in a in a oh, bronco. It's dated 1739, on, right on the oh. bell. Oh, okay. That was, and I bought that from Eric, Eric's widow after he died. Wow. Eric was a, was, a, was a good American, I mean. And I remember we, we'd fly, we were flying some places in my airplane. And I'm sitting in the pilot seat, and he's sitting in a co pilot seat. And he's, he'd see a cloud, and he'd tell me that, you know, he was the first weatherman on TV. He know, knew so nice. much about weather and, and and why why the roof of a barn in in, eight, in 1780 slanted south instead of, I mean he knew all those things that the people in those days knew knew what there was and they built their their house and their barns uh, depending on which way the wind's going to go which way the snow's going to blow in and they knew all of that yeah and then he did all of his cloud paintings too that, that was his thing. Yeah, he initially wanted to be a sky painter. The first sky painter, he called it Cloudscapes. He did so many different subjects, you know, um, the clouds, the barns, the you know, landscapes, the, uh, I mean, the pen and ink, he wrote books, he, he did, he was nonstop. Eric was very careful when he painted animals and, and humans. You'll never see a, a, a person with a, with, with, a, with a face. They're always off in a distance. And really the only animals, I mean now I can make correct me, but the only animals they ever painted were dogs. And the birds. And the, and the little bird. Bird, yeah. The little well, he bird. Would, well, that was the doodle, but yeah, he, 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 not, he loved to paint ducks in his cloud yeah, he did paint. ducks, but, but that was early. But it was a, a slash with a couple of wings. I mean, you can't. It was early on yeah. he did the, the birds, but most of them was the, just the. But he, he, he said he didn't want to do. Uh, it wasn't. A lot of people see the barns, the covered bridges, but it was the mood he was painting. Yeah. He was painting the mood, and he wanted people to look at the painting and feel. Right. Well, you know, Eric, he built his studio in Santa Fe about two or 300 feet away from this house. And he had a nice little stone walk mm -hmm. to get out there but, but because he said he wanted to get away. And one time he was telling me that he was painting the inside of a barn. And he said, I was all by myself. I got in that kind of mood, and I, I could smell the decaying hay and where the horses had been and the hayloft there. And he, he said that, that barn came alive to me. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was 
it, it wasn't an abstract thing. It was a, a, a real physical thing that he became part of. I mean, he was part of that barn. He said he could smell the decaying hay. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It'd be nice to, to get into that mood some. Everybody loves horses. You know, they love the smell of they even love the smell of horse it's manure. Unique. It's unique. <laughs> That's a good smell. <laughs> Well, Eric, Eric said that I'm going to, when he was 78, he says, I'm going to write one more book, I'm going to call it 78, and then I'm going to die. But he didn't. He didn't write the book, and he didn't die. Then he said, I'm going to write one more book, I'm going to call it 79, and then I'm going to die. But he didn't. And then he said, several times he told me, I'm going to write one more book, I'm going to call it 89, and I'm going to die. And he died two weeks after the book was published. That's the only reason I wish he wouldn't have wrote the book. What? I wish he wouldn't have wrote the book. He, he, he said that he had had enough. Yeah. Really but everything, it was, it, it, when it's the time, you don't have a say, but he, knew he had a full happen. life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without a doubt, he had a full yeah. life. And he had how many wives? Five? Six. Six wives. Six wives. <laughs> Some not very long. <laughs> some were short lived. I'll tell the story about the 21 Club. The 21 Club? The BLT. Oh, yeah, when he went out to dinner with one wife, and, and the waiter came over and asked him what uh, took their order, and, and she said she wanted a BLT. And the waiter looked at Eric and said, What do you want? And what would you like to order? And he says, I don't know, what do you want? And he said, a divorce. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yes. I think it was a 21 club in New York, and she ordered a BLT, and the waiter almost fainted. <laughs> yeah. And they said, well, what do you want, sir? He says, I want a divorce. And they were divorced, were they not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he yeah, married this one woman. They told me this story. I don't know whether it's published or not, but she painted the kitchen brown, and then she and took... She painted bricks in, you know, lines, because it, she wanted to look like bricks. And Eric was just, I mean, you didn't know what to think about all that, you know. And, and I don't think she lasted very long either. No. <laughs> I like what you said about him, uh, that he married housekeepers, because when he got a divorce, they cut the house. <laughs> well, what was interesting is Eric had his father when his mother passed away. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was hard for him that his mother passed away because his father then married the housekeeper. Oh. And the housekeeper became Eric's stepmother. And the stepmother had a son, but she wanted to move her son and her into the home and push Eric out. Mm -hmm. and, and so Eric didn't feel welcome there anymore. And they kind of butted heads, but it kind of came full circle because years later, the father had found how the stepmother was doing things that were deceitful, and he pushed her out the door. Oh, okay. But I thought it was interesting how he would say he married housekeepers when it was his dad that actually did marry the housekeeper. Yeah. But that was back in the time she, he just needed a mother figure in the home. Right. And then he took the family car and headed west. Yes. I think in, in one of his books he said, I pointed the radiator to west. Yeah. yeah. And that, he slept look, in that first, car. Yeah. And, and he drove all the way across the country, not only with the, the license plate that you talked about in your book, but he didn't even have a license. He didn't even he didn't have, have a driver's license. He didn't license. have a driver's oh. license, but he, he made the license plate out of a piece of cardboard. Yeah. And, the, and put their, the, the their police phone never number. Did, in two years, the police never did know it. And the letters that he put on the on the license plate was their Lake House phone number, the B L D G, and then some numbers. And it was his house phone number for the Lake House. It was like, but he wouldn't take. But it was they had license plate. They would hang up their license plate off the car on the wall in the garage. And he didn't take last year's license plate, he just made a new one. Yeah. We had such a great visit. I really wanted to say thank you so much to Forrest Ben for sharing your time with us. Fond are the memories, my mind's
Train.